Hello, and welcome to my QTP video tutorial where I will be answering the following four questions. First, what functionality comes with the data table.value property? Second, what are the proper syntax options for writing the code? Third, how to retrieve a value from a data table with data table.value? And fourth, how to set a value in a data table with data table.value? As a reminder, to stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button above. Now to address the first topic which asks the question, what functionality comes with the data table.value property? The data table.value property can be used in a couple of ways. First, it can be used to set a value in a data table. Second, it can be used to retrieve a value in a data table. This now moves us to our second topic, which asks the question, what are the proper syntax options for writing the code? For this, I will now flip over to QTP so that I can show you those examples. There are several different ways to type in the code to use the data table.value property. The two inputs you will need to provide are the column and data table where you're looking to either set or retrieve a value from. I'll show you the column inputs first, then follow with the data table inputs. To begin, we need to type in the word data table, so that is D-A-T-A-T-A-B-L-E, then type a period. You'll then see a drop down list appear that will have several options in it. Scroll to the bottom of the list, double click the word value. When you do this, you'll notice that the drop down list will go away and you'll see the word value in your script. You should now type in open parentheses, which is shift none on your keyboard. For the column inputs, there are two different ways you can enter the data. The first way is to enter the column name in quotes. So for example, if we wanted to reference the first name column in our data table, we could type in open quotations and then first name as the column name, and then type a closing quotation. The second way is to enter the index number of the column. The column index numbers start with 1, so the first column is 1, second column is 2, and so on. So instead of typing out the column name as I have before, I can now type in a value of 1, which will reference the first column in the data table. However, for ease of viewing for the rest of the video, I will use the column name instead of the index number. For the data table inputs, there are five different ways you can enter the data. To begin with, though, we need to type a comma to separate the column and the data table inputs. The first way is to enter the data table name in quotes. So in our example, we're working with a global data sheet. So we could enter an opening quotation, the word global, and a closing quotation. And then a closing parentheses by typing shift zero on your keyboard. The second way is to enter the index number of the data table. The data table index numbers start with 1, so the first data table is 1, the second data table is 2, and so on. So instead of referencing the data table by using the name of the data sheet of global, I could type in a value of 1. Since it's the first data table in the list, a value of 1 would reference it. The third way is to enter a value of DT global sheet if you want to work with a global data table. The fourth way is to enter a value of DT local sheet if you're looking to work with a local data sheet. The fifth way is to not enter a value for the input. So I'll just go ahead and delete off DT local sheet. If you do not enter a value for the input, QTP will assume you meant to retrieve information from the data table with an index value of 1, which is the global data sheet. For ease of viewing, I will enter a value of global back in. This now moves us to our third topic, which asks the question, how to retrieve a value from a data table with data table.value. When retrieving a value from a data table, you can do several things with it. You can display the value in a message box, display it in a print statement, set it equal to a variable, set it equal to an environment variable, use it in a report event, and update another data table value just to name a few. For this video, I will be retrieving the value and displaying it in a message box. To do this, I will move the cursor to the beginning of the line. 
I will then type the command for message box, which is M S G B O X, and hit the space bar to create a space. For more information about using message boxes, please watch the video that I've created that addresses those. I will now run the test to see the value being retrieved. You can run the test in one of two ways. You can either hit the F5 key on your keyboard or click the run button near the top left corner of the window. When presented with the run window, you can either click the OK button or hit the enter key on your keyboard. You will now see a message box appear with John in it. This now shows one way of retrieving a value out of a data table. To close the message, you can click the X, click the OK button, or hit the Enter key. This now brings us to the fourth topic, which asks the question, how to set a value in a data table with datatable.value. When setting a value in a data table, you can use data from a number of sources. You can use a string, the value in a variable, the value in an environment variable, and another data table value just to name a few. For this video, I will be updating the value in the first name column from John to Jane. To do this, I will begin by copying the data table dot value command on line 1, then paste that value onto line 2, then hit the space bar to create a space, then enter an equal sign, then hit the space bar to create another space, then type an opening quotation mark, then type the word Jane, and then type a closing quotation mark, then hit the enter key to create a new line, and then copy all of line one, and then paste it onto line three. When we run the script, we will first see a message box appear that will show John as its value. After clicking through that, we will then see another box that will show a value of Jane. So we'll go ahead and run the test. As you can see, the first value is John, and that corresponds with the value of John that is still in the first name column. We'll click through this. You'll now see that the value being returned is Jane. That's because the value in the first name column has now been updated to Jane. I'll now click through this, the test run can complete. Now if we take another look at the data sheet, you'll see that the value is back to John. The reason for this is that the data table value updates only apply while the test is running. As soon as the test run stops, the data table values go back to what they were before the test was run. This now brings us to the end of our QTP video tutorial, where we answered the following four questions. First, what functionality comes with the data table dot value property? Second, what are the proper syntax options for writing the code? Third, how to retrieve a value from a data table with data table dot value? And fourth, how to set a value in a data table with data table dot value? As a reminder, to stay up to date with my latest videos, Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button above. Thank you and I hope that you have a great day.